version of its Flakes program, coming to you from Fort Meade, Maryland, and starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Dennis Day, Rochester, yours truly, Don Wilson, and one of the country's newest dance bands, the McFarland Twins and their orchestra. <laughs> Playwright, your old friend Don Shakespeare Wilson, presents a serial serial in three acts. Each act will star America's beloved serial treat, sweet as a nut, grape nuts flakes. The serial folks fall in love with at the very first bite. Act one, the scene is breakfast. Mom, Pop, and Little Willie are seated at the breakfast table. And notice, please, in the spotlight, a big 12-ounce economy-sized package of delicious, malty, rich grape nuts flakes. Act two, the next day and it's lunchtime. Pop's just come home from the war plant, and Mom's just come home from Red Cross. But Willie beats them both home, and his teacher told him that whole grain cereals make a swell luncheon dish nowadays. And here he comes bearing those grand-tasting, nourishing grape nuts flakes. Act three, one more day, supper time for our dear little Willie. And Mom's there with those crisp, tempting, toasty brown grape nuts flakes. They're just as delicious, they're just as nutritious at breakfast, at lunch, or at supper. with a pack on his back played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the state of Maryland, the home of thoroughbred racehorses, we bring you that old gray mare, Jack Benny. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny whinnying. And Don, speaking of horses, I wouldn't be surprised if all track records were broken this year. Racehorses will run faster than ever before. How do you know? They've got to. It's either that or the meat market. Well, <laughs> imagine, imagine, imagine losing $2 on a nag and a week later paying 24 cents a pound for them. Ah, <laughs> oh, that doesn't seem right. No, it doesn't. Tell me, Jack, is this your first visit to Maryland? Oh, no, no, no. I've been here several times, Don. In fact, uh, I got this scar on my chin when I was working at the Oasis Club in Baltimore. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that, uh, that was years ago. Oh, a guy in the audience threw something at you, huh? No, no. You see, Don, I was going with a girl in the show called Charmaine the Snake Charmer. You know? <laughs> and she didn't tell me her rattler was teething. <laughs> I don't know what became of Char Charmaine, but W.C. Fields tells me he often sees the snake around. <laughs> anyway, Don, it sure is nice broadcasting for the boys here at Fort Meade, isn't it? Yes, Jack. You know, this is not only a tremendous reception center, but it's also one of the Army's largest baking and cooking schools. Yum, yum. Uh -huh. baking, uh, baking and cooking, huh? Yes, I went all through it this afternoon. Well, I knew it looks good. <laughs> I tell you, Don, if you're not careful, you're going to find... Come in. <laughs> Mr. Benny? Yes? On behalf of the boys in the baking and cooking school at Fort Meade, I'd like to present you with this lovely upside-down cake. My goodness, do you make upside-down cakes in the Army? No, I stumbled on the way over here. <laughs> I appreciate it anyway. It's a wonderful cake. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What's going on? Well, Mary, the boys at the baking and cooking school here just sent me this upside-down cake. Doesn't it look delicious? Yeah. Those guys are going to make wonderful wives after the war. <laughs> well, cooking is a darn good trade. You ought to go through this school here, Mary. I did this morning, and you know, Jack, they certainly do things in a big way. Well, naturally, they have to cook in tremendous quantities. You said it. I saw a kettle of soup so big, they had a lighthouse in the middle of it. <laughs> 
That, that I don't believe. Uh, would you believe they stirred it with a speedboat? <laughs> no, nothing. You just saw a great big kettle of soup. What kind of soup was it, Mary? A uh, cream of elephant. Now cut that out! <laughs> But you know, one thing, Don, the food here, really, they have marvelous seafood here in Maryland, especially oysters. See, I had eight dozen oysters for lunch. Eight dozen oysters? Oh, you must be awfully fond of them. It's not that. He promised some dame a pearl necklace. <laughs> what else can I get a girl gives me so much nourishment? I'll get that necklace, too. Say, Mr. Benny, I was out in the hall just now, and I saw... Oh, uh, oh hello, Dennis. Hello. <laughs> Say, Mr. Benny, I was out in the hall just now. Where, uh, where you been all day, kid? I was, I was looking for you. I went over to visit the Wax at their headquarters. Oh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the Wax, eh? Gosh, I never thought I'd see the day when I'd be holding a second lieutenant on my lap. I'm dating a sergeant myself. She's a fifth. Say, Mr. Benny, I was out in the hall just now, and I saw a guy wear wearing two suits of clothes that were exactly alike. Oh, those are the McFarland twins, Art and George. Uh, we have their orchestra tonight. Well, I'd like to meet him. He seems to be a nice fellow. You'd like to meet them? Twins are two people. Well, they sure look alike. If it wasn't for that glint in George's eye, I couldn't tell them apart. Tonight is a romantic program tonight. Hey, fellas, come on out here and take a bow. The McFarland twins, everybody. <laughs> Gosh, I can't tell these guys apart myself. Uh, well, fellas, I'm glad to have you on the program. How do you feel? To tell the truth, Mr. Benny, we're a little nervous. A little nervous, eh? Yeah, we, we didn't sleep a wink last night. Hmm, say, I like to get things straightened out here. Which one of you is Art and which is George? I'm Art and he's George. <laughs> well, look, uh, one, one of you will have to take that alone. Now, uh... Now, now, which is which? I'm Art, and he's George. I'm George, and he's Art. I'm Mary, and you're Jack. I know, I know. <laughs> now, now, fellas, it's about time for your band number, but first, I think our audience would like to know a few facts about you. Now, where, uh, where were you boys born? Detroit, Detroit Michigan. Uh-huh. The, uh... Well, we got some boys here from Detroit. Whereabouts in Detroit were you born? To tell the truth, Mr. Benny, I was born in a taxi cab. Well, I made the hospital. <laughs> oh, then, uh, then uh, Art is really a few minutes older than you, eh, George? Yeah, I ask his advice about everything. <laughs> uh, very good, George. I'm Art. No, I'm Art. Oh, I thought, I thought he was George. No, I'm George. What? I can't stand this. I'm going to blow my brains out. <laughs> Dennis, put down that atomizer. Well, now that we're acquainted, uh, fellas, uh, what do you say we have a nice hot band number? Just a minute, Mr. Benny. We haven't discussed our salary with you. Salary? Go ahead and play, fellas. Hey, we're not... <laughs> hey, we're not playing till we straighten this out. When do we get paid? Well, it's, it's very simple. Sure. Every Monday, Jack invites us up to his hotel for roast turkey. Never mind. And we have to hunt for our money in the dressing. <laughs> I do that just one week for a gag. I got 15 cents in a giblet. All right, let's have your number, fellas, and we'll talk about money later. Come on, boys, let's have it.
That was uh, for me and my gal, played by the McFarland Twins and their orchestra. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go any further, I'd like to give you a brief description of these two boys. Now, let's see. They have brown hair, brown eyes, two heads, four arms, and twin beds. They also have one salary. And now, folks... Hey, hey wait, wait a minute. minute. What, what do you mean, mean one salary? Uh, we'll talk about that later. And now, folks, uh, sit down, fellas. Sit down. Yeah, sit down before he knocks you down. Dennis. What, what was that, that crack, Benny? Benny? He said it, not me. Please, sit down. And now, folks... Gee, I... I'd be a fool to start a fight with two fellas. <laughs> oh, really, I would have. You'd be a fool to start a fight with two girls. <laughs> you stay out of this. And now, folks, for our feature attraction this evening... I think one girl could take you. <laughs> what are you guys laughing at out there? Anyway, I'm ignoring that. Now, for our feature attraction this evening, and inasmuch as we are broadcasting only 20 miles from Washington, D.C., we are going to present a modernized version of one of Hollywood's greatest motion pictures, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. That is, we are going to show you what would happen if a young senator were to arrive in Washington today. In the first place, he'd never get a room. Quiet, that's our plot. <laughs> I mean it. I'm staying at the Shoreham Hotel in Washington, and I had to take the bridal suite. The bridal suite? What's wrong with that? No groom. Oh, oh. Anyway, um... Anyway, Washington is crowded. So is Baltimore, where Dennis and I are staying. I've got lovely accommodations at the Belvedere, Mr. Benny, but the view isn't so hot. Oh, what floor are you on, Dennis? All of them. I've got a cot in the elevator. <laughs> the elevator? My goodness. Anyway, folks, in our drama... I have my ups and downs, believe me. All right, I'm up and down. In our drama... <laughs> Always comes in with those things there. In our, in our drama, I will play the part of the young senator from Illinois. Mary will be my secretary, and Don, you're going to be the senator from your home state, Colorado. Well, thanks, Jack. That's very nice of you. Uh, don't mention it. Do you think you can play the part of a senator, Don? Jack, I can just see myself in the Senate chamber now. Mr. President, may I have the floor? Hmm. Fellow senators, I come from the wild and woolly west where men are men and they gotta have their grape nuts flakes for breakfast. What? And I make a motion that an amendment be added to the Constitution. To the Constitution? That toasty brown sweeters and grape nuts flakes be served in every American home. I thank you. Very good, very good, Don. The part is yours. Now, Dennis... And as it says in the Bill of Rights... What is this? It is the heritage of every American to have iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. I thank you again. Very good, Senator. Sit down. Now, Dennis... And furthermore... Cut it out! <laughs> Sit down, fat boy. <laughs> I steal everybody's stuff. I don't care. Or I'll tap you gently with this gavel. Now, Dennis... Uh, Dennis, uh, you've got a swell part in our sketch. You're going to play my father. Your father? Yes. I'll probably get slugged for this, so I won't say it. <laughs> That's right. Now, let's see if you can play the part of my dad. Okay. Now, sit down here, Sonny, and I'll tell you the facts of life. <laughs> the the uh, facts of life? Good. Go ahead. Now I'm stuck. <laughs> Never mind, you'll do. Anyway, folks, our play will go on immediately after a song by my father, Dennis Day. <laughs> go ahead, kid. I just kissed your picture Good And now, dear, I'll turn down the line Your picture neath my pillow Works like a charm, it seems For you still through my pillow Into my dream Not really, I'm 
your picture goodnight sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Mr. Benny, there's something I meant to tell you. Did you hear the plug that Fred Allen gave you on the air last Sunday? Fred Allen gave me a plug? Yeah, I heard it, too. A plug? Well, what did he say? Well, Fred said a policeman stopped some people driving down Broadway last Sunday and said, hey, don't you know you're not supposed to drive around in your car anymore? Where are you going? Uh-huh. So the driver said, we're going over to see the Jack Benny program. Yeah. And the cop said, well, as long as it's not for pleasure, go ahead. <laughs> so that's the plug Alan gave me? Listen, Dennis, what do you mean, plug? That's an insult. Oh. <laughs> and now, and now, ladies and gentlemen... Well, I still think it's nice that we're the only program people can drive to. <laughs> oh, quiet. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, that kid's half Pollyanna and half stupid. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, well, it's about time you were getting here. Hello, boss. Did you send for me? Uh, yes, Rochester, I want you to play a part in our sketch tonight. You're going to be a Pullman Porter. A Pullman Porter? Don't act so surprised. <laughs> what, what did you do before you worked for me? I was president of a bank. <laughs> now, wait a minute. What bank were you the president of? The Harlem, put in your money and we'll roll you double and nothing for the interest. <laughs> Trust company. <laughs> What? Incorporated, limited, and bounce them against the wall. I see. Well, tonight, you're going to be a porter on the express train that runs between Chicago and Washington. Can't you make that a local? I got a gal in Pittsburgh. Sorry, Rochester. This will have to be an express. Okay, let's go. I tried, honey. And now, folks, for our political drama... Mr. Benny goes to Washington. Take it, Don Wilson. The opening scene is the railroad station at Waukegan, Illinois. Jackson Benny, a local boy, has been elected to the United States Senate. And the whole town, including his father, Zeke Benny, has gathered at the depot to see him off. Listen to George Pritchard and his Waukegan Firehouse Band. Mm -hmm. 
thrilling, Dad. Those tears are all for me. I'm mighty proud of you, son. Wipe your nose. <laughs> Thank you. Speed! 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 Thank Speed! you, folks. Speed! Thank you. I sure appreciate your coming down to the station. And the first thing I intend to do as senator is to carry out my campaign promise to definite. <laughs> And after that bill has been passed, I will positively. Hooray! And in closing, I would like to repeat my campaign slogan. Vote for Benny and get him out of town. Hooray! That's all, folks. I thank you. Now, uh, where's my secretary? Here I am. Wipe your nose. Thank you. Are my trunks on the train, Miss Livingston? Yes, but you ought to be wearing them. You'll freeze. I mean my baggage. Well, that's my train, I guess. Goodbye, everybody. So long, Dad. Wait a minute, son. I hear there's a lot of gals in Washington. I'm going with you. You can't go, Dad. You haven't got your toothbrush. I haven't got my teeth either. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Come on. All aboard. Train leaving on track one for Chicago. South Bend, North Bend, East Bend, West Bend. And I've been fine. How have you been? Oh! <laughs> That guy's been out on a bender. <laughs> that corny. Come on, Dad. Come on, Miss Livingston. We're off to Washington. <laughs> Eight hours later, and our young senator is well on his way to the nation's capital. Just think, tomorrow morning I'll be in Washington. Washington, D.C. I've always wondered, son, what does the D.C. stand for? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, a senator's got a lot of them... <laughs> a lot of important things to do. Might as well get started. Take a letter, Miss Livingston. I didn't bring my notebook and pencil. Oh, fine. You've been my secretary for eight years, and you haven't taken down one word. Well, you haven't said anything. <laughs> That's so. Just for that, sister, you can get off my lap. Well, then your father better get off mine. <laughs> Well, the train's crowded. Now, where's my briefcase? Say, Porter. Yes, Senator? Have you seen my briefcase? I want to get my cough medicine out of it. Well, is that still cough medicine? <laughs> yes. My, my. Oh, so you thought it was something else. Well, it says right on the bottle, take two, two uh, tablespoons. <laughs> Take two tablespoons before retiring. Well, I'm going to bed. I don't know what about you. <laughs> we both need rehearsing there. Wh what? <laughs> Good night, Santa. Mm. Oh, well, I can get some more medicine in Washington tomorrow morning. Uh, before we get there, will you please take off those spats that say vote for Benny on them? <laughs> oh, yes, I wore those to get the midget vote. <laughs> I think I'll rehearse my speech for the Senate. Fellow Senators, I am here today to plead for the Waukegan Bill. A bill that will provide for... Hooray! Hooray! The following morning, and we find our young hero about to enter the lobby of a prominent Washington hotel. Gee, things are crowded here. I hope we can get room. Well, let's try this hotel. Okay. <laughs> Well, they're full, I can see that. <laughs> Four hours later. Pardon me, sir, have you got any vacant rooms in this hotel? No, and wipe your nose up. <laughs> Thank you. Three days later. This looks like a new place. Pardon me, can we get rooms here for tonight? We have no rooms, we have no suite. We haven't even got a seat. But that's the way it always goes. I'm sorry, sir, and wipe your nose. <laughs> Thank you. Two weeks 
minutes later. Pardon me, do you have rooms here? I don't know. Hey, Eddie, have we got rooms here? I don't know. Hey, Bill, have we got rooms here? I don't know. Hey, Sam! Never mind, I'll try someplace else. One month later, and our weary group is still on the march. Walking, walking, walking. I'll never get to the center. Look, Senator, there's a nice hotel, and it doesn't seem crowded. Where? Right ahead of us. See that sign? Hotel Vacancy. That's vacancy. <laughs> it means they got rooms. Let's go in. Ah, at last we found a place. I'll speak to the clerk. Pardon me, sir. I wonder if you have any... Hello, stranger. Welcome. <laughs> Say, Slap, we saw your sign out front, vacancy. What can you do for us? Well, Senator, for 25 cents, you can hang all night in the coat room. Ah? Uh -huh. And for 50 cents, you can sleep on the jukebox. Jukebox? Right in the furious face, five cents extra. <laughs> yes? And for a dollar, you can ride the revolving door and sleep like a top. Well, I'm willing to spend money. What do you got for $10? For $10, I'll sell you this brick. A brick? What am I going to do with that? You can break my window and sleep in jail. Okay, give it to me. Come on, Dad. Come on, Miss Livingston. We're off to the clink. You know, friends, when I was a baby, I was such a little baby. No <laughs> fully. They used to call me Little Boy Wilson. No one ever thought I'd grow and I'd grow until, uh, well, you see how it is. And what happened to me happened to crisp, toasty brown grape nuts flakes. They're fast growing, too. In fact, grape nuts flakes are the fastest growing ready to eat cereal in America today. And there must be a reason. Well, there's a reason, all right. Two of them. First, it's that distinctive flavor. The flavor you all love in grape nuts, presented in tempting flake form. And it's that nourishing goodness. For grape nuts flakes bring you the important whole grain food values you find in natural whole wheat, including iron and two of the valuable B vitamins recommended for everyone by our national nutrition program. So ask your grocer for luscious grape nuts flakes in the big economy package. <laughs> was the last number of the 17th program of the new Grape Nuts Flake series. And we'll be with you again next Sunday night broadcasting from the Marine Base at Quantico, Virginia. Tomorrow night, we'll be seeing you boys at the U.S. Naval Station at Bainbridge, Maryland, with the whole gang, including Danny Kaye, the star of Let's Face It. Also hope to be in Washington for the President's Ball. Good night, Joni. Benny program is written by Bill Maher and Ed Beloy. This program is for the entertainment of personnel at Fort Meade, Maryland, and does not necessarily constitute an endorsement of the product by the War Department. <laughs>